Hello everyone. We've seen now a number of convergence tests for series such as the divergence test, integral test, and the direct and limit comparison tests. But most of these tests assumed that the series only had positive terms. Of course, this is not always the case, and actually one very common kind of series we'll encounter later on are the alternating series, whose terms alternate between positive and negative forever, and at the moment we have pretty limited tools for dealing with those. So let's start off with a new convergence test that applies specifically to alternating series. It's called, fittingly enough, the alternating series test, and it says the following. Let sigma sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the power n b sub n be an alternating series where the b sub n factors represent the positive version of the terms of the series. Or in other words, the b sub n are the terms of the non-alternating version of the series. If, as a sequence, the b sub n terms are decreasing, then the alternating series converges if and only if the limit of the b sub n sequence is zero, and the alternating series diverges if the limit is anything else or does not exist. That's a bit of a mouthful, so let me try to summarize this a little more succinctly. The alternating series test says that if the terms of your alternating series are getting smaller in magnitude, then the series converges if the terms converge to zero, and diverges if the terms do not converge to zero. In a sense, you could say the alternating series test fulfills what the divergence test wants to be. The divergence test says that if the terms of a series do not converge to zero, then the series definitely diverges, but it's inconclusive if the terms do, in fact, converge to zero. The divergence test can never confirm convergence, but the alternating series test, by contrast, does let us conclude that an alternating series converges if its terms converge to zero. So why does it work? Or to get to the heart of the matter, why does it succeed where the divergence test fails? To get a handle on it, let's try to visualize the partial sums of an alternating series whose terms decrease in magnitude and converge to zero. What you're seeing right now is a plot of the partial sum sequence of an alternating series being built up term by term. Each colored dot represents a particular partial sum of the series, and each arrow represents the term that was added to the previous partial sum in order to generate the current partial sum. As you can see, the arrows alternate between pointing up and down. To help keep track of this, I colored the dots according to the direction of the arrow that points to it. A dot is colored green if it was generated by adding a positive number to the previous partial sum, and it's colored red if it was generated by adding a negative number to the previous partial sum. Another important feature to note is that although the direction of the arrows are alternating, the length of each successive arrow is shorter than the one that came before. This captures the fact that the terms of the alternating series are decreasing in magnitude as you go along. Okay, back to the question at hand. Why should this series converge? Or to put it graphically, why should the sequence of red and green dots converge to a single value? Notice another thing about this graph. The green dots are always getting lower, and the red dots are always getting higher. Why is that? Turns out, it all comes down to the shrinking nature of the arrows. Think about it for a moment. If I zoom in on a random, say, green dot, what happens as I generate the next couple of dots? Well, since it is a green dot in this case, the movement in the sequence will be downward to a red dot. After that, the movement would be upward again to another green dot. But remember that the lengths of all the arrows, red and green, are shrinking. Thus, the next upward arrow will have to be shorter than the length of the current downward arrow. Thus, the final position of the next green dot must be lower than the previous one. Of course, I made the initial dot a green dot, but the same logic works when starting with a red dot. So that explains why the green dots are going down and the red dots are going up, and that kind of suggests that they will collide. But will they? What's to stop the red and green dots from asymptotically approaching different horizontal lines, leaving a gap across the middle? The answer is the second property of the series terms. They converge to zero. That means that, in addition to shrinking, the red and green arrows must be shortening all the way down to zero length. And since the arrows represent the distance between the green dot sequence and the red dot sequence at a particular point in the process, if the arrows shrink all the way to zero, the red and green dots must approach one another. Thus, the sequence of partial sums, represented by the dot sequence, converges, 
and hence the alternating series converges.